Uh, you called the music park, and I said, you called the dip. Dude, this guy, Violet Vagabond has been trying to link me this video for so long. This is bad. Dude, I swear to God if this isn't good. Okay, I'm just permanent you. New and improved and open I'm permanent you. Fantastic. Anna Gilligan is there this morning. Hello, Anna. Hi, guys. Yeah, I think you're seeing some guys jump off the Tarzan jump here at Action Park. It's been closed since 1996. They reopened it on June fun. 14th. I'm here with the owner, Andrew Mulhaville. He's also the son of the man who founded it. Thanks for being here. It's great to be here. Thanks for coming out. What a day we have. It's beautiful here at Action Park. So I got to ask you, because Action Park got a bit of a reputation. Okay. Most dangerous music bag in the world. Well, how, um, how's some the most... people got injured. Actually, I, just, uh, I mean, how bad is it? I mean, it was a badass park. It's going to injure people. 30 years ago, the world has changed. I mean, when my dad started the park, he was the guy inventing the rides and bringing inventors in. Now it's highly regulated. Everything's engineered. I love Action Park because it's so beautiful. That doesn't fucking fun. I'm going to balance that swing. Looks fun. The year is 1976. Gene Mulvihill, the head of entertainment company Great American Recreation, has added a new attraction to Vernon, New Jersey's Vernon Valley Ski Resort. Two Billy brand new dead. alpine slides were installed to keep business up in the off-season. An alpine slide is a one-person cart ride, in which the rider rides down a hill in a smooth track. The rider has a brake lever in between their legs, giving them complete control of their speed. The attraction had become popular for That's ski resorts so in the late 70s, and Vernon Valley Ski Resort's Alpine Slide was advertised as an attraction for all ages, claiming, we've had grandfathers and we've had kids of kindergarten age coming down our runs alone. Okay, I don't know about, okay, I don't know about kindergarten kids. Okay, so my thought is like, she will literally jump off a fucking two and a half meter fucking concrete fucking verge onto more concrete. Like, she, like if you don't stop it, she just fucking... She just, she like speeds on her bike directly towards a massive staircase. I mean, I don't know, dude. They, they don't care. They don't understand that. They can't comprehend. Like, the part of your brain which assesses risks doesn't actually work. It doesn't work. Yeah, she like, I'm not even kidding. Sky, Sky like fucking at full speed bikes towards literally like a staircase that's going down at like a fucking 40 degree, a 45 degree angle. Right? Just straight down. And she'll just go at full speed. I had to, like, literally run at her and tackle her ass, like, to stop her from going down it. Like, okay. I also have a picture showing a mother controlling the sled with an infant in her arms. It's that easy. After the success of the slide, Mulder Hill went forward with his plans to expand the ski resort into a water Bro. park during the off-season. Infant's brain! Dude, I'm, I was literally looking at my kid's brain yesterday, and you see their head pulsing up and down, and you can literally touch their brain because it's all soft because their skull is infused. If you fall off with an infant, dude, you're just going to crush them, dude. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. Their brain goes up and down. This is normal. You can literally sit there and look at their brain and go... Psh. Well, it's not even their brain. I think it's a blood... Po I think it's just a blood... I think it's a blood pressure. You literally look at this... They, they have a soft spot at the back and a soft spot at the top where your skull is not fused. It's so humans can come out of the vagina, basically. Um, and so we can have large brains. Um, yeah. He added two water slides and a racetrack, and more slides, a softball field, a tennis court, and a swimming pool were added shortly thereafter. The Vernon Valley Summer Park was rebranded to Action Park, a thrilling amusement park where you control the action. More slides and rides were added, and they began their big marketing push to draw audiences into that their new so water fun. park. Just go to Action Park, there's no other park like it. When it's hot out, this is a great place to spend the day with your family. So lots of big things for little kids to do. I love Action Park because it's so beautiful. It's like coming to Broadway. It's wonderful. I mean, these slides do look fun as fuck, right? Like, let's be real. Most slides are pussy as fuck. These ones look big dick. Race like a pro. It's great. <laughs> these are the most amazing rides in the world. I love it here. There's nothing in the world like Action Park. The park was revolutionary. Not only was it one of the first water parks of its kind in the United States, but it also marketed itself as the biggest. Fuck it was eventually gosh, home dude. to 75 rides, 40 of which were water slides. Action Park was split into three themed lands. Oh, the first everything. was... Can we be real? Motorworld consisted of three types of attractions, land, water, man. and air rides. 
On land was the popular battle action tanks. For an additional <laughs> fee, guests could ride inside tanks equipped with tennis ball cannons. The goal was to shoot the other tanks in the caged area on one of their targets, disabling their cannons for 15 seconds. Those that chose to ride the tanks were allotted 5 minutes to do so, and those that did not want to ride could pay to use a stationary cannon from the outside. Maintenance employees attempting to fix broken down tanks would be subject to fire from the rowdy guests, making the attraction a nightmare to work at. The other two land-based Motor World attractions were the Lola Cars and the Super Go-Karts, both of which were kart race attractions. The Super Go-Karts were driven on a small loop. The carts themselves were designed to max out at 20 miles per hour, but the employees found that sticking a tennis ball in the governor device allowed the cart to go as fast as possible, with the new maximum speed being around 50 miles an hour. Head-on collisions frequently- Okay, that's- I mean, bro, do you, do you really want them to be going 50 at head-on collisions, dog? I mean, with no helmets? Okay, they should have helmets. It sh I mean, I think you can go 50 as long as there's like- as long as it's a one-way road, and then they have helmets on sent guests to the hospital, and the fumes from the engines overwhelmed riders at times. The Lolo cars were mini open cockpit race cars driven on a longer track, and they cost an additional charge to ride. Their maximum speed could also be tampered with by park employees. These were also used after hours by the workers, sometimes being taken off the track and driven on the nearby highway. Like there were two water rides in Motor World. The super speedboats were driven in a small circle around an island in a pond, a pond that also had a large population of snakes in it. The guests would often attempt to bump <laughs> nearby boats, as if they were on Motor World's other water attraction, bumper boats. These were boats placed in a small pool, and were designed to withstand guests crashing into one another. These were known to leak gasoline, which once required a guest to be examined after too much- Everyone's played on bumper boats before, it's literally just a bumper boat, bro. ...fuel leaked on their skin. The boats were also incredibly small, and riders with long legs had to position their feet off the side of the boat to fit. This led to injuries and bone fractures after collisions. Finally, Motor World had two airbase attractions. One was Space Shot, which was a typical drop tower ride and was one of the safest rides at the park, given it was only open for Action Park's last operating year. The second air ride was another upcharge attraction, Slingshot, which was also fairly safe. This ride was a common amusement park and carnival ride, in which guests were shot up on two bungee cords and flipped upside down as they flew through the air. There's no doubt that Motor World had its dangerous attractions, but this is just the beginning of what Action okay. Park has in store. Another section of the park was... Give us the numbers on how many people get injured, like... Many non-water-based attractions were located in their own section of the park, sometimes labeled the Alpine Center. These included the aforementioned Alpine Slides, as well as a bungee jump titled the Snapple Snap-Up Whippersnapper Ride. Originally having two jump stations and then later four, guests could jump off the tower for an additional fee. A skate park also had a short run at Action Park. It was poorly designed, as it was surrounded by concrete and had uneven edges which led to many injuries during its existence. Interestingly, Action Park also had an attraction entitled the Action Park Gladiator Challenge, Bro, partially so based off of the popular American Gladiators TV show. This included obstacle courses and jousting matches. I, I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but every single fucking thing in this place has been pretty fucking badass so far. Which is against the Action Park Gladiators. Finally, Action Park had its own monorail called the Transmobile. This went to the Ski Lodge, the Alpine Center, and to Motor World. So far, Action Park has proved to be dangerous. But where are the absolutely terrifying rides? Where are the rides that are so insane that their mere existence is unbelievable? Moreover, where are the water slides? Show us the, like, dangerous shit, bro, because I This section put the action so in Action Park. Waterworld had it all. It was home to the tidal wave pool, a 100 feet by 200 feet pool that could hold anywhere between 500 and 1,000 people. The pool's floor was slanted, and the further a guest went in it, the deeper it got. Waves went 20 minutes on, 10 minutes off, and they could reach a height of over 3 feet. So this was challenging for swimmers of all skill levels, as the pool was hard to read and the fresh water was more difficult to swim in than salt water. A dozen lifeguards were on duty at the pool, and they would have to save around- Wait, what? Is that a thing? Wait, what? Is for Wait, is that actually a thing? I guess, yeah, the more salty it is, the, easy the easier it is to float, but like- I've never noticed the difference between swimming in the sea and swimming uh, in a pool. I've literally never noticed the difference. I've never, I've never been like, man, it's so much easier to swim in the sea. Versus like, I mean, I don't know. I, uh, yeah, the huge difference, bro. How is there a huge difference? I, I mean, I, chat. I've been, I literally won a competition for sculling for like two and a half hours in a pool. Okay, and I got a, I got to fucking um. They gave me tickets to go catch fish on Taupo Lake, okay? Like, I can, I can, it's not a hard, like, how, how do you, how's it hard to swim in a fucking freshwater pool? On 30 people on a busy day. The Tarzan swing was a heavily advertised. 
You literally float vertically it's so salty. You cannot touch the bottom unless you force yourself downward. That's fucking cool. They like swimming in the, but that's like ultra salt, brother. That's like that's like ultra salt, right? And then it smell bad there. Ties like attraction in which guests would swing on a 20 foot cable over a pool. This spring fed pool was so cool that lifeguards would have to rescue guests that could not swim after the shock of the cold water. This was also a popular attraction <laughs> for men to pull down their pants or women to pull up their tops for the line of people to see. The appropriately named Aqua Scoot gave guests. Wait, a what? Pull down their pants, pull up their tops. Wait, were they showing their titties? I'm so confused. Sled, with which they would slide down an assembly line style roller coaster, hurtling them toward a shallow pool that they would skip across. If the guest was not in an ideal position, it would get caught under the water, sending the rider crashing forward. There were originally a pair of these slides, each 30 feet long, but a third slide was eventually added. The diving cliffs have- Yeah, everyone knows that. You don't face the nose of it down, bro, because then you go, bang, and you fucking face us to water, dude. Had two jumping bases one 23 feet and the other 18 feet tall, with the pool below being 16 feet. The pool was also for non-jumpers, some of which were unaware of the cliffs, which resulted in collisions. There was only one lifeguard on duty, who had to work extra hard to make sure that no one was at the bottom of the pool. I, I could see clowns fucking just jumping in before they, they, they I could see, I could see clowns, if, if they don't, if there was not proper supervision, I could see clowns jumping onto each other and fucking shit up, right? Yeah, like, like young me would probably do that, right? Yeah, but now that I'm older, I wouldn't do that, so. The super speed water slides, also known as Geronimo Falls, were a pair of high speed vertical water slides. One of them was steeper than the other, and both were dangerous. Near these was the safer Kamikaze, which was a more traditional tube slide. The kayak experience was pretty self explanatory, and used underwater fans to simulate water rapids. This was dangerous, but that goes without saying at this point. A similar ride, the Roaring Rapids, allowed guests to ride in a one or two person raft down a similar river. The Surf Hill had riders slide down a multi-laned, multi-hill slide That's on so a map. Cool. Riders could easily cross over to the adjacent lanes and cause collisions. And the Seventh Hill, nicknamed the Backbreaker, had an additional <laughs> hump that would send riders flying, resulting in injury. <laughs> the Backbreaker. The Colorado River Ride was another raft ride, this time allowing up to four people, oh, and it went shit. through the wooded area of the park. At one point, the riders would come to a fork in the river and had to choose between two paths. The first path took guests under a waterfall and a series of tunnels. The second path included a waterfall and another fork, with one path being steeper than the other. The ride also included a foot-tall jump that would allow riders and their raft a short airtime. The Aerodonium was a That's skydiving simulator cool. that caused injuries when guests would try to stop their falls with their arms. Waterworld also had a variety of other typical water slides and pools that were less notable, but there is one in particular that has yet to be mentioned. This is the attraction that made Action Park the most infamous, the Cannonball Loop. A tubed water slide with a vertical loop, similar to that of a roller coaster. That it was rumored sick. that during the testing of the attraction, Mulvihill offered $100 to employees who were willing to try it. Test dummies apparently came out of the loop without their heads. When it was open, guests would be weighed, hosed down, and given a set of instructions to decrease the possibility of injury. A hatch was added to the top of the loop to assist stuck riders that could not make it all the way through the slide. Many guests that completed the loop would come out at the bottom, suffering from bloody noses or other injuries, either from hitting the top of the loop or the impact on the way down. The cannonball loop was indicative of a larger issue with Action Park, as many of the okay, other- Okay, that's just bad design. That's bad design. I can imagine that, like, come on up and then fucking get into the top, not enough speed, bang, and just smacking your way, like, smacking your head down the way down. Other attractions were poorly crafted by designers that were less than engineers, and most were designed to minimize cost rather than maximize safety. <laughs> the rides became even more dangerous when paired with the fact that the park sold alcohol at many oh, of the man, convenience stands, boomers, dude. often to minors. There was even a microbrewery near Motorworld. Many of the guests visiting the inexpensive park came from low-income areas and did not have the necessary swimming skills to navigate some of the attractions and pools. Action Park also heavily marketed to Spanish populations, but there were no translations I mean or translators for the guests when they visited, so explaining safety instructions was virtually impossible. You already know the that Action Park has the most innovative and saying. exciting rides, the Alpine Slide, Grand Prix race cars, and spectacular water rides. But Action Park means more than just great rides. It means super live shows, fantastic summer festivals, and scrumptious food and drink, including an authentic German brewery. Come to Action Park, because the rides aren't the only thing that's great. Labor Day Polish Festival, September 6th and 7th. Polish Festival. The majority yeah. of those employees were teenagers and were not equipped to handle the rowdy guests of the park. So on any given day, you could have an overcrowded water park filled with drunk teenagers that couldn't swim, riding shoddily built attractions supervised by teenagers that may or may not be able to communicate with them. It is no wonder what happened next. Oh no. 
On July 8, 1980, a male employee was riding the Alpine slide when his cart went off the track. He hit his head on a rock during the crash, killing him. He was only 19. Oh, Two sash. years later, on July 24, 1982, a 15-year-old guest was overcome by the waves of the tidal wave pool and drowned. Yo, on August I must admit, wave pools are more like yes. I've, I've been in a wave pool before, and like I'm fucking literally like struck. I'm inhaling water, and I'm trying to get up. And I can't get up because I'm in the deep end, and I'm getting pushed back into the wall. Like I've literally had that before. Like, if, and if you don't have a good lifeguard, absolutely you can fucking drown in the white pool. Like, if, not if I sorry, I was good at the white pool, and it's in Lower Hut in Wellington or Upper Hut, Lower Hut. For whatever, there's a white pool there. I, 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 I had a, like a not not a drowning experience, but I had I remember like inhaling water, like, getting stuck, slammed against the wall. And I remember like fucking. Only just clawing to this fucking the wrong thing and like pulling myself up and being like, Ugh. and then I remember I just had PTSD. I didn't want to go to the white pool for quite a while after that. First, a mere week later, a 27 year old guest was, was riding the kayak experience when he was trying to re enter his kayak after falling out. When doing this, he made contact with the live wiring that powered the underwater fans. The electrocution sent him into cardiac arrest, and he passed after oh, being rushed cringe. to the hospital. Two years later, in 1984, a guest died on the Tarzan swing after a heart attack, supposedly due to the unexpected shock from the cold water. That same year, on August 27th, a 20-year-old drowned in the tidal wave pool. And on July 19th, night. I mean, the heart attack guy—that's their own fault. Like, I mean, if dude, that doesn't count. That doesn't count. You die from a heart attack because you jump into cold water, bro. I mean, yeah, you, there was like a shock. That I mean, yeah, he that person was probably fat as fuck, and it probably just had bad health in general. I mean, really, I, no humans are designed to go into cold water. We got to cross through cold rivers and shit. Okay, all right. If you have a heart attack, you go in cold water, bro. Okay, I'm just saying, like, like that's that's uh, like really, you probably just need, you know, to stop eating so much McDonald's, basically. That's what I'm saying. 1987, another guest drowned there, giving it the nickname the Grave Pool. These deaths are tragic, oh, and often overshadowed by the lunacy and legacy of Action Park. Interestingly enough, Action Park was able to avoid many lawsuits with these deaths and many other injuries, due in part to its reputation, and also the lax regulations New Jersey had for amusement and water parks. Great American Recreation was Rocking even able out. to expand the Action Park brand to other parts of the country, opening Pocono Action Park in Tannersville, Pennsylvania in 1980, and Action Mountain in Pine Hill, New Jersey in 1984. Get wet get at Action Mountain. Feel the thrill as you zoom through the black hole. Spin and splash on our bumper boats. While the kids play in our fun-filled kiddie area, cool off in our huge swimming pool, or race around the Grand Prix track. Get wet on any of our action-packed rides at Action Sick. Mountain in Pine Hill, New Jersey. It's awesome! Pocono Action Park had many repeat attractions as Action Park, and was closed in 1991. Action Mountain ran into some financial difficulties with the IRS and the town it was located in, and was closed in 1986. So why did the original Action Park close? While Action Park and Mulville Hill were able to avoid lawsuits with many of the accidents and deaths, the two deaths in 1984 stemmed cases that rightfully plagued the park with a variety of legal problems. Mulville Hill eventually pled guilty to five charges of insurance fraud. He and his associates claimed that the park saw over 1 million guests a year, and therefore the death toll was comparatively low. The local ER, on the other hand, said that they would have to treat 5 to 10 guests on some days. In response to the high amount of guests visiting the hospital, Action Park bought Vernon, New Jersey, new ambulances. Despite all of these issues, the downfall of Action Park wouldn't come until 1996, and it was actually due to Great American Recreation's financial Just buy them off, you know, buy some ambulances and shit, she'll be right. ...issues and not the park itself. On September 2nd, 1996, Action Park ended its final season, still with the hope that it would reopen the next year. However, Great American Recreation's bankruptcy made it impossible for Action Park to continue operations, so it didn't reopen. That's After sad, this, the ski dude. resort and Action Park were handed from investor to investor, undergoing renovations for two years before reopening in 1998 as Mountain Creek. Safety was a priority under this management, and a valiant effort was put forth to distance Mountain Creek from Action Park's reputation. However, in 2010, Mountain Creek underwent a bankruptcy of its own, and the Ugh. water park and ski resort was sold to the Mulvihill family. Two years after this... And like, you got, like, okay, people are going to die, okay, occasionally in freak accidents, you know? Like, uh, be, like, yeah, ult there's like a balance of, like, having no safety precautions and being too YOLO and people just trying to save money and make the rides unsafe. And then there's, like, a fucking, another one where it's, like, oh, too safe and all the rides are lame as fuck. There's an in-between, right? There's an in-between, right? 
Dude, you can die. You, you can just trip over and die, chat. Do you understand? You can just slip in your bathroom and die. Like, okay, you have a water park where it's all about making slippery surfaces and shit. I mean, obviously, you should make it soft. But it's like, dude, people are going to slip on the concrete. Like, it's a, a whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah, some people are going to die if you're going to have a good... A good action park is going to have an occasional death. Okay? It's going to have an occasional death. In 2012, Eugene Mulvihill passed away, That's, and his son know. Andrew Mulvihill took over ownership of the park. Two years later, in 2014, Mountain Creek was rebranded back to Action Park. The park reopened many of its classic attractions and started construction on like, new... Like, so I've gone cliff jumping off cliffs where, like, a bunch of people have died, um, and it's like, okay, you know, I'm still going to jump off the cliff. It's fun. But, like, you know, whatever, dude. Like, okay, it's not safe. Like, whatever, I still choose to jump off the cliff. Like, and that's, like, ultimately, you can't expect to go to a, 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 a fucking amusement park and not expect to get a potential injury or, you know, in a very, very, very rare ultra freak unlucky accident, you could die. But then you could just die. Anyway. No, I didn't. I, di I jumped off a cliff in Australia, and then after I jumped off, I found out, like, a bunch of people had fucking, um, you know, gone and jumped there, and someone had actually died. There's this one chick who went in, and she jumped in and basically come up, and she's fucking ears were bleeding okay ears were bleeding terrifying ones because the sky caliber was another attempt at a 360 degree vertically looping water slide although it used technology to enhance safety from my knowledge it is yet to open at the park and there's almost no information on its status the new action park tried to use nostalgia to draw guests back for two years before in 2016 it was renamed back to mountain creek in order to once again get away from the negative connotation of action park Early this year, it was announced that Johnny Knoxville would be producing, writing, and starring in a film inspired by Action Park, but it was not shot on location. Death is heartbreaking, especially in environments designed for happiness and joy. Despite six people losing their lives there, Action Park is not remembered for its death toll. It is it's remembered for bad. and by the kids that grew up with it and survived it. It is seen as a place where the quote-unquote popular and brave teens hung out. The fact that it was referred to as Traction Park or Class Action Park doesn't matter because its inherent danger is more of a fond memory. Like if millions of people went there and did shit and like six people died, that's not that bad. Right to the majority of its visitors. The burns, bruises, and the fractured tibias were a rite of passage for its former guests. You think it's you're cool fun. because you survived a tame roller coaster at Disney in California or at Universal in Florida? Well, welcome to Vernon, New Jersey. Were you able to survive Action Park? I mean, am I am I out of touch here, Chan? I don't think I am. I don't think I am. Relax. Okay, oh, what the fuck? There's more. I tried to click off and then I ran and we got this. Oh, what the hell? That was bonus content. That was bonus content. Bonus content, dude. That was bonus content. It's not over. Fun. Nice job. Wait, she's going to go swim and get a microphone. Hey. So give us her. Oh, look at her. It's like out of a movie. This is good. Where is she? Wait a second. We lost what Anna. What happened to her? Greg, you need to go rescue go. Anna. Let's see. Does she take a... Indeed. Yay! First of all... I'm starting on Saturday. Nice bathing suit. They're open from 10.30 Greg, to 7. Greg, stay What's appropriate. That? Never mind. Anna, you look great, and you handled that beautifully. I'm just trying to keep Greg in check. Why are you so out of breath? <laughs> Bye, so, guys. I'm going to go put some clothes on. Hold on a All second. Right. No, not so fast, Anna. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, Anna. Let's see. This is in uh, New Jersey, right? <laughs> Be nice. Oh, I just want to talk and to her stop, a little while. Stop oh, oh, milking okay. this shot. I'm okay. just wondering, uh, Anna, how long did it take you, uh, let's see, to drive? To get undressed? To drive. Yeah, well, we saw that. <laughs> how long is the trip? Oh, wait a second. Wait, uh, I think that's smart. The, 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 what, uh, Anna, go dry off. We'll see you in a little bit. What is uh, wrong with you? Relax. Okay, thanks, guys. Uh, thank you, Anna. Hey, I guess we're done. Don't be so frowning at me. Jesus Christ, fucking Kumas, dude. Gee, they're everywhere. Okay. All right. There it is. Actually, that's not sexual harassment. He's just fucking around as a meme, dude. Holy fuck, dude. It's just a fucking meme, dude. It literally is. Oh my god. He's just fucking memeing, bro. She could have worn a different bikini, bro. Okay. What are you talking about? Oh my god. You guys are being cringe, dude. You guys are being crazy. World of Warcraft, Dragon Isles. Um. <laughs> oh, shit. 
<laughs> okay, I'm just me. Just a joke. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. See how that comes up. It's Do you look back bad. at some of your old lyrics, given the climate of what's happening today with women's empowerment, and be like, damn, that was kind of fucked up that I said no, that? No. No, hell no. That was me. I love every motherfucking man. Fuck them hoes. Man, Straight stop, up. man. Fuck no, don't. <laughs> True. Oh, shit. Okay. Okay, all right, Violent Vagabond, you survived. You survived. All right, that was a that that, that one was it was it was decent. It's a decent video. Okay, decent video. Okay. Um